Now I'm going to show you the beginning of our gravel pad driveway combination. And I'll show you around the shipping container. So here's the container. Give a slow pan. It's a 40 foot. It's nine and a half feet tall. It's huge. I'm not going to show you the inside because I don't have it open. But as you can see, it's sitting on a really nice base of the leech rock or road base. And that's how big of an area and that's how far I had to come up to level this out. So I had a level pad for my RV. Now, once I get the three quarter put over the top, it's gonna look nice and smooth. It's gonna be a really, really nice driveway going to be a good level spot to park the RV and the shipping container is going to provide excellent windbreak and then this is basically the driveway same thing it's going to get two inches of three-quarter over the top which will make it fill in really nicely oops you can see it's holding that with my other hand I've got a cigar so anyway, this is the basic shape of the driveway. I will make the three quarter go about a foot off of each side, but down the areas that are gonna be driven on, it's gonna be really, really sturdy. Even when it rains, gets muddy, whatever, I'm gonna have a good solid driveway. I'm never gonna to have to worry about being in a situation where there's mud coming up through or anything like that. It's going to be a good foundation for a long, long time. And then most of this area here is going to be all landscaped. I am going to put something along the border of the driveway. And then right here in the front, I'm going to put a double opening 12 foot wide gate made out of chain link. And then I'll have probably a short distance of either chain link fence or a, another kind of a fence. It's going to go around the whole parking area and the whole landscaped area. There's my water tank, 2,600 gallons. This big pinion pine tree here is going to get cleaned up and I'm going to put a patio down below. Maybe a picnic table or something. This is a great spot with lots of shade in the afternoon and I think that it's going to make a great spot for that. Somewhere out here in this big open area, I'm going to put a greenhouse and possibly another parking area back there. The reason why I picked this spot, I'll walk back to the shipping container. The reason why I picked this spot is because someday I want to build a house here and that is the perfect spot to put a house and more than likely this shipping container with a couple more added on to it and a roof over the top would form a nice garage with all kinds of storage or a shop maybe I'll even build a pole barn next to the shipping container in this spot hard to say but anyway that's basically the plans for my base camp you might think it looks a little big for a nomad well i had a dream of doing this long before i became a nomad so i'm actually getting to do both things i've gotten to be a nomad and still will be but more on a part-time basis this is the kind of solitude I was looking for. 
And if you look way over there, that's Asha's camp. You can barely make out the shipping container. We got a really good deal on these containers. I've got the rest of the gravel for the driveway. As you can see, right up here at the front, across here, there's going to be a gate. I'm going to make it out of chain link and it's going to have a 15 foot opening. This is the gravel I had delivered. It's three loads of three quarter inch minus. What three quarter inch minus is, is the size goes from three quarters of an inch down to zero. The gravel we already had delivered is called two to four inch. Most of the pieces are between two and four inches, just like this. I don't know what they call it here in Arizona, but in Oregon, in construction, we called this road base. And you would put down in, in an area that's muddy or has problem with traction, which this area can when it gets wet. Usually put down four to six inches of that, and then you put two to four inches of the three quarter minus over the top, which is exactly what we're gonna do here. Right here is a spot where I put down a couple shovelfuls of the three quarter on top of what I have there existing from the, what I'm calling the road base. And it makes a really good solid surface. You don't even have to compact it. It literally compacts itself as you put it down. Um, it's going to make a good solid driveway here for a long time. Um, the driveway, we had to level it out quite a bit. And I think I showed a little bit of it in a previous video. But I'll show you some more. So, if you look closely, that's how much I had to build this up. I had to come up about... Eight, between 8 and 12 inches and I came up that far underneath the entire shipping container now I didn't come up quite as high as I should have as you can see that the RV, the back of the RV this is the position it's going to be parked in most of the time backed in and you see that the back end is up off the ground now I have it raised up properly a lot of people don't know, but when you have hydraulic jacks, you can actually lift the back end of the RV completely off the ground. But you don't ever want to put take your drive wheels and pull the drive wheels off the ground. And the reason why is because the parking brake that holds this vehicle in place is on this set of drive wheels. That's my tag axle. It has no suspension. So it is literally off the ground, as you can see. The right way to do it is to put it up on blocks and then lift it up on the jacks from there. And as you can see, I've done it properly because the sag on that tire tells me that I still have weight on the suspension. So technically I have weight on my parking brake. Now, these giant jacks technically are gonna keep it from moving, but you can't be ever be too safe. So, I'm going to put roughly two to three inches of the three quarter over all this. And it'll bring the level up just a little bit, but it'll make this a really good solid base that will last for longer than my lifetime. It will always have good drainage, never have mud. And these one foot square pavers are what I'm going to put underneath the wheels of the RV instead of using wood blocks next time. So when I install the gravel, I'm going to install these. That way I have a 
kind of a permanent setup. I can just pull the RV up onto it every time and it will always be good to go every time. When I level the RV out, there's lots of ways to do it. A lot of people do it different ways. I try to get the RV as level as I can before I use my leveling jacks. They will level the RV pretty dramatically, but I find that uh, it has the most comfortable feel to it when it's leveled properly and the weight is kind of evenly on all four jacks. Um, plus, sometimes if you're on very unlevel ground and you try to really level the RV up with the jacks, it can actually twist the frame of the RV slightly. And then sometimes things like our bathroom door don't always close all the way. And the bathroom door is kind of like the canary in the coal mine. It tells me how level it is by uh, what the door does after I'm done. And so I've found in my experience that it's best to have the RV as close to level as I can before I actually use the jacks. And so that's the way I do it. Um, right, wrong or not, that's the way I do it. This is our 40 foot container and uh, I've checked it several times. It actually is perfectly level. Um, I prepared the spot fairly well and it uh, came out that way. So basically this entire driveway is what's going to be done. I'm going to come a little bit on the outside of where I have this gravel now and then I'm going to be putting some different things down as a border along the edge to make it look nice and crisp. Um, Coming up, this big open area is going to eventually have a patio and a large greenhouse. And then I'm going to fence in the entire camp. One, to keep the dogs in, and two, to keep away the coyotes. I heard a pack of coyotes this morning off in that direction and they sounded like they were less than 50 yards from my camp. When I went out there this morning after I had heard them, I saw uh, tracks and I saw a spot where one of them had started to dig. Um, fresh dog paw prints out there where my dogs haven't been yet, so I know it was the coyotes. Um, also, I'm going to be making a video with an update about my success with the mice and the different things that I had decided to use and what has worked and what hasn't. We've been in this spot now for, I think, eight days and I've got 10 mice. And I think that's pretty good. 10, 10's good. Um, I have no doubt that there are plenty more, so I'll keep you informed and I'll make a nice video about what's worked and what hasn't.